And welcome back to a special episode of Wizards of the Street, Remembering Rakesh. Uh, Bhaskar, let me ask you again. Is it fair to say that his understanding of Titan was even ahead of management, so the promoters, when he first invested in Titan? I don't know about ahead or behind. Management was clearly, when I was the managing director, very, very focused on executing to a strategy which we had chosen ourselves. But like Rakesh believed in India, our belief in India came from our understanding of consumers, you know, because we were deeply in that. And therefore, we were investing in what we knew best. I think Rakesh's larger belief in the larger picture of India that was emerging, perhaps, you know, could be, uh, you know, aligned to what you're saying. But the, I think what he helped management do was every time, and I know, you know, Utpal was there uh, two times, I think, there, were a, there was a visit to Titan. And the difference between, if you were to call management board and so on, and him was, this team would come, do a two-day deep dive, and inspire the management. That rarely happens. I would always find these interactions, you know, as if two sides of the table, you know, quizzing you on what you did wrong and what, uh, you know. Uh, this was a two-way street for This you. was for us, like, the management, the youngsters in the team would say, we've not heard a guy say this. You know, the belief in the company, mm. not just in India, and saying, look, I think you guys can go here. And that, uh, you know, the, you know, when somebody talks, like him talks like that, to the management, then you don't need ESOPs and all, you know, to right. make people That's perform. Very, but, very... Uh, Bhaskar, did, did it surprise you yeah. that Rakesh has held this huge stake in Titan for over 20 years? I mean, did you expect that? I frankly didn't. In fact, once uh, he did tell me, he, he, I think it was closer to when I was going to retire. Mm. And I think everybody knew about our relationship, you know, our friendship and so on. So he once told me, look, you know, Baska, I hope, you know, uh, I think I'll exit when my stake hits a billion dollars. Right. I said, look, Rakesh, on this part, you know, there's an understanding. I will never tell you when, what, sell, buy. It's just not, you know, we know not each on. other for some other reasons. And I think we hit that number much earlier than I retired. <laughs> I think he was thinking that it'll be a little after I retire. In fact, you retired <laughs> when the stock price was the highest it had ever achieved. I remember that day. But Utpa, let me ask you, uh, Bhaskar talking about billions of dollars, uh, Rakesh made over $5 billion. That's also probably understating it. But was making money his way of keeping score? Or was it just trying to be an income tax commissioner's son, trying to escape his middle class roots? What was it? Rakesh was a huge believer in capitalism. And he felt equity markets were the temple of capitalism. And he believed that eventually capital allocation helps you to create wealth. He was doing what he believed in. And that was all. He was always focused on opportunities. Money was an outcome of that. Money was an outcome. It was, and he, he believed that the means are as important as the end. So therefore, making money was just an outcome. It was not the process. Understood. And you've often said that, Amit, that uh, Rakesh wanted you to do it legitimately. But you also once told me, Amit, that you don't teach Sachin Tendulkar how to bat. Yeah. But even Sachin retired. Did his illness and ill health in the last few years, did that diminish his appetite for equities? No, no. There was no, nothing called quit in Rakesh Ji's uh, vocabulary, mind, thought process. There was no quit over there. In fact, uh, Ramesh, in the last couple of years when he was going through a difficult time, the mood was not very good because of COVID. I think he made some of the most aggressive bets of his life. I think agility-wise, Ask Utpal also. I think he was working at a performance level which I don't, I had not seen in the last five, seven years. Maybe in the full bull market, first one. But this time, the, it was just unbelievable what he was doing. And some of the trades, some of the investments which he put out, they, they multiplied several times. He yeah. never lost his appetite. Jakes, uh, they say that uh, he's made billions, he never lost his appetite. What are some of the techniques that you saw him use to become a successful investor? You know, I think it's said that uh, it's not important how often you're right, but how much you are in when you're right. 
What I think nobody said? epitomized that better than Rakesh. I, you know, in fact, I used to be, I would say, almost <laughs> an open-mouthed, you know, shameless admirer of the way that he could do it because the ability to carry risk uh, through leverage, through futures trade, to pyramid and do what uh, his conviction told him. And every trade was a new trade, forgetting the fact that you already had an exposure. I'm sure that in his mind, exposure has been calculated. He had that little pocketbook where he would, Famously, in the middle of the yeah. night, tell you exactly what he was doing. But I think the ability to leverage, that is the most important thing, and double up, that is one, one particular technique. The other which I felt was, uh, many, many moons ago, a gentleman called Ramesh Damani, uh, <laughs> R.K. Damani... Ouch! And, you going to remind me. <laughs> R.K. Damani and uh, Rakesh, we met when Pantaloons, at that time it was the future group, uh, where judges been called Pantaloons, had a market cap of 20 crores. And there was 25% on offer at par. And the three gentlemen in question uh, uh, spoke to Kishore Biani for an hour and a half and passed the opportunity. Never mind, I thought, you know, these things happen. So as a banker, many six months later, we placed it out, etc. The stock went up to about 100 over a year. Rakesh identified an opportunity because certainty had given place to uncertainty at that time. I remember him coming in at 100 and he rode the wave up to an average of 1800 rupees. And I think that, the fact that something has happened is in maths, they call it a no memory property. He just shut out the past and said, the, past, the opportunity yeah. is now. So the ability to get caught up in your own beliefs, which people have, you know, which makes you say, but I looked at the stock at price X, it doesn't matter if you did. What well, did you do? Uh, Jake, as you said, but just to set the record straight, one hour, of course, twaddled his thumbs. The other hour, built a retail empire. And the third hour, actually invested in the stock. So <laughs> there was some sort of happy ending to it. But uh, let me ask you, uh, you want to have is an investor in speculator jakes, okay? That's enormously difficult to do, isn't it? Enormously difficult when put together. I've actually had situations where he would be aggressively short in the, in the futures while holding stock. And he would wear the two as seamlessly. It was almost as if, if you didn't understand biology, you had a left brain and a right brain that worked in parallel without a problem. Nobody's been able to get the dichotomy right, but I think he did it. And that's what made him hold on to stocks while using the market mechanisms to insulate against a potential fall. And that's what I mean. I think he was a bigger trading genius that has been made out. And he was a bigger investor that has been made out because you put the two together. It's almost impossible. It's almost impossible to do it. I agree with you as having tried both of them and failed miserably at them. But Amit, let me turn to you. Uh, a lot has been said about Rakesh the investor. I want you to give me a few points about Rakesh the man. Thanks, Ramesh, for asking me that question. I think not much has been said about that. First thing, right off the bat, I think Rakesh was the most fearless man I've ever come across. He knew no fear. He did not know the meaning of the word fear. Whoever he was meeting, right from the prime minister down to a company promoter or anybody, he was completely fearless. That was the biggest thing about him, I feel. Second was his transparency. What you saw is what you got. There was no difference between what he was thinking and what he was saying. Open book. The, he was a completely transparent open book, which was... Uh, as open as could be. There was nothing private or public with him. What he spoke in private, maybe he spoke more loudly in public, Correct. rather than trying to be talking in whispers or hushing it up. Yeah. So these were the two things. Third was, I think, one thing which I saw of Rakesh towards his end, close, towards the end, was his stoicism. You see, he asked for no quarters, he gave no quarters. Towards the last year or so, things were getting hard for him. L one by one, a lot of things which he liked had to were he had to give up by force. Not that he wanted to give up. He didn't have a choice. And he never, never ever complained. complained. Yeah, he never blamed anybody for it. He never asked for any sympathy. I think that was just unbelievable. But Amit, you him. also told me that you really uh, were touched by his compassion. Extraordinary. So fearless and then this compassion which is there. You know, Ramesh, you won't believe it. During COVID, my wife lost her dad. And she had a tremendous back injury. She was not being able to move. And two, three months later, when things cleared up a little bit, I went to his house and told him, wish we could go to Bilaspur. And lo and behold, he organized a charter flight. Charter flight. With the doctor. With the doctor. <laughs> he didn't even ask me about it. How can this can come only if the man is compassion beyond normal. With that, we've come to an end to the first part of our eulogy for the big bull. Remembering Rakesh, life and times from some of his contemporaries. I have very fond memories of Rakesh from my school and college days. Rakesh had passion and was always very ebullient. A great believer in stock India, believed it was undervalued. And we can see the transformation of the Indian capital markets in front of our eyes. 
an amazingly sharp instinct and deep incisive ability to look through numbers and see the opportunity. Rakesh, we are proud of you and I miss you. He was someone who touched my heart in terms of actually giving me that realization that the path that I was on, on towards the path of structuring the company was the correct one. His endorsement, his encouragement, his guidance in that meeting not only gave me courage and conviction but also gave a huge amount of positivity and conviction to my ent entire team who were present with him. He was an eternal optimist, especially during the difficult periods of GST implementation, demonetization and COVID. He was constantly there, counseling us how we could use every crisis as an opportunity and ensured that we emerge stronger after all these crises. Everyone at Akasa will be eternally grateful to the late Mr. Rakesh Junjunwala. Uh, Rakesh was an early believer in Akasa's vision and plan. Rakesh was passionate about all things Indian. Uh, Rakesh was extremely passionate about uh, Akasa's customer experience, but he was equally passionate about the employees' health and well-being. To conclude, I would like to share a poem by Ellen Brenneman in which I found comfort during those dark days of August. Think of him, she says, as living in the hearts of those he touched. For nothing loved is ever lost, and he was loved so much. Thanks for the memories, my friend. In the next episode of Wizards, we will continue our chat about the life, legacy, and learnings of Rakesh Junjunwala. We will be saying farewell to Jay Kumar, who has other commitments, but we will be joined by Burgess Desai, executor and trustee of his will, and former managing partner, Jay Sagar and Associates. Thank you, and do keep watching Wizards. Odisha.